Now I got on my suit. I'm, I'm actually wearing a suit because this is Bishop's pulpit, so I had to put on a suit. I've been going to church with white folk for about four years, so we wear jeans, cut off t-shirts, we drink coffee in the sanctuary. We know ain't none of that going on. <laughs> I believe church should be enjoyed and not endured. And I feel like the Spirit of the Lord wants to do something significant in here. So tell your neighbor, is it okay if I just worship for a minute? Just ask him, is it okay if you don't mind? Oh, oh, oh. hey, oh, we want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Anybody want to see it? We want to see your kingdom. Sing it out, sing it out. We want to see your kingdom. Sing it like you mean it. We want to see your kingdom. Yeah. Spirit breaker. Break our walls seconds to give God a praise worthy of what he's done for you just this week alone. How would that worship sound? I'll give you 27 seconds. Oh. You still have 15 seconds and then you can sit down and seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. Lord Jesus, in this atmosphere, speak through your word. Bless your people. Thank you for this opportunity to preach. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the leaders. For the bishop, not only of this church, but he's a global father and the woman who stands next to him thank you for their investment in me and their trust that I would be an honorable extension of their legacy this morning but be glorified and may we all be closer to you Lord Jesus when this moment is over than we were when it first began this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Can you give the Lord a praise as you take your seat?
I am honored to be with you this morning in the home of the next Super Bowl champions, Dallas Cowboys. If you are booing, make your way to the altar to get delivered. <laughs> that boy that good, that boy good, he good. I do want to give honor to uh, Bishop Jakes and First Lady Sarita for this amazing opportunity. The whole world knows his name, and rightfully so, because God has used him and his wife to change the way people see the Lord in every facet of life and ministry, music. Bishop, you remember when Bishop did that love song album? I was like, now, I just, I love Bishop. I just don't want him when I'm trying to slow dance with my wife on the CD player. Oh, yes. It's time for love. No, Bishop, just preach, sir. I'm be in my bedroom. <laughs> Speaking of the bedroom, my wife is here. <laughs> Stand up, baby. Speaking of the beautiful woman, I've been married six and a half years. She gave me two children in 11 months. My children are 11 months apart. To Avin to Gray, I love you, honey. And to my children who are somewhere in y'all children's church eating up all the goldfish crackers. <laughs> to John and Theory, I love them very much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm standing here and I don't get nervous anymore. I've been preaching a long time and I know the Lord has called me to it, but there are some moments that you just have to stop for a second and just say, this is not common. This is not casual. God is doing something significant and being here with you this morning is significant for me. I grew up in a small little Baptist church in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was singing in the choir. My mother was the church pianist. She had an Afro with the black fist comb. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. And to all of the Potter's House online, people who are watching, God bless you. It's just crazy. I got an online church as well as the folk that are here. When I was growing up, we had three channels, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Now we got a thousand channels of cable. When I grew up, TV used to go off. Uh, na, 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 na. Some of y'all don't even, kids don't even know what this is. This is, we used to turn the channel. Have foil on the antenna. Don't move, it's working, don't move. Stay there, stay, stay there, stay there, stay, stay there. Stay there, don't, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. <laughs> so much has changed. I'm thinking about my life and I'm thinking about the fact that my father left my mom and I when I was four years old. He walked out the door. He didn't come back. And it didn't stop my mother from serving God, <laughs> trusting God, or pushing me to Jesus. And I was seven years old when I gave my life to Jesus and I knew who he was. I've been walking with him ever since. I'll be 44 in three weeks. I think about this single mother who was raising her son, doing the best she could, working full time, going to college at night to make a better life for me and her, graduated with honors with her degree in social work, went on to have a phenomenal career in mental health and blessing other people. She was building bridges, often the only African-American woman in the entire building, but she persevered and she was gracious, loving and kind. And I didn't understand why my mother was always teaching me how to connect with people that didn't look like me, didn't come from where I came from. But now here I am living out the things she prepared me for. But I didn't know it then because it was just me and her in a brown Toyota Corolla hatchback with the pleather seats. So you understand in the summer they was tearing your thighs up. 
My point is that sometimes where you come from is not an indicator of where you're going. Now, I'm at Lakewood, but I feel like shouting this morning, so y'all don't mind me in about eight minutes. I'm going to act a complete fool in here. I'm going to shout all over this premium carpet. This is premium carpet, too. This is nice. This is lovely. Oh, look at, oh, look at this. This is so lovely. What's funny is that many of you come from different backgrounds, and I don't think too many of you had silver spoons in your crib when you were born. But if you knew what God was about to do in your life, and some of you, God is already doing it, but if you knew what was coming, the person next to you would be frightened by the level of worship that would come out of you right about now. Because you've gone through too much hell for God not to be doing something amazing. You've gone through too many no's and too many places of rejection for God not to do something phenomenal. You've been overlooked too long, undervalued too long. They be texting about you. Are you that important that they got a, a separate feed with you out of it? Girl, did you see what she had on this morning? Why are you worried about what she got on this morning? Why are you always on people's minds? There's something about you that just gets on their nerves. You know what it is? You've been winning too much. And when you win too much, people stop clapping as often. When it's one thing, oh, I just pray he blesses you, but then when he does it, now don't do too much, Jesus. But if they knew what I knew, if you knew what I knew, you wouldn't wait till the end of this message to run all over this place. This is for anybody that's ever been underlooked, overvalued, forgotten, left for dead, marginalized. They assume they knew the level of your gift. They knew your voice. They knew your calling. They assumed you were only going to ascend so high. I am the evidence that no matter what it looks like, where you come from, or who left you, if God said it, it has to come to pass. While you're shouting, I just need to throw this out. Revelation 3, 7 and 8, I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. It's Pentecost. This is the time to shout. If you were ever going to shout, shout when the Holy Ghost shows up. Because the Holy Spirit empowers us to do the will of the Father in the earth. You have an open door. If you have to knock, that's not your door. Your door is open now. Yeah! Ah, yeah! I just want to talk to anybody who had been knocking. You don't knock on Pentecost. The door is open. You're going from what's your name again to we've been expecting you. You think God let you walk across that bridge, kept the rain from falling, knowing you just got your hair done for you to come in here and not get a word? They didn't know what you carried. And they treated you like you were common. And God wanted them to treat you that way because he wanted you to see who they were. Dad! Because nothing exposes character more than the way you treat people you don't think you need. If you knew what I carried, 
and what God was doing, you'd latch on. But God said, I'm going to hide you in plain sight to show you who your real crew is and who the fake ones are so you know who to carry with you when I'm taking you to the place I'm taking you to. I'm going to wait for some of y'all to catch that because some of y'all been sitting up asking, Lord, why did he leave? I don't understand. I thought it was you, Jesus. That was my friend. Now we don't get along. The Lord said, I love you too much to take you higher with dead weight. You be talking about new levels. There ain't no new level. It's a different atmosphere. The higher you go, the less oxygen available. You can't take people who are sucking oxygen that aren't contributing. Why do you think Jesus didn't take all 12 disciples all the way to the top of the mountain? Peter, James, and John, y'all come on. The rest of y'all, I'll see y'all when I get back down. It's not that I don't love you. It's not that you don't serve a purpose. But as I go higher, my circle gets smaller. Stop crying about who left, thank the Lord. They had to go because you're about to go higher. <laughs> you're not driving, you're being launched. When you have liftoff, when the last time you seen a rocket with a rear view mirror? Rockets don't have reverse. You don't have time to look back. They had to go and don't look back because whatever's for you is in front of you. Any single folk in here, y'all should have shouted there. Like, Lord, I'm not sure. Did I mess up? No, you didn't mess up. Don't go back because you're lonely now. Don't forget why y'all broke up in the first place. I ain't even gave y'all no scripture yet. <laughs> Go to 1 Samuel 16, please. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I'm so glad to see a choir. Y'all sang. Y'all blessed me this morning. Can we thank God for the choir? Anybody in here? have gifts that you know God has invested in you, but other people haven't seen them yet? Yeah. Talents, callings, there are things on the inside of you that if you said it out loud, people would be like, are you kidding, really? <laughs> what, what did you have in the red cup at the picnic? You are drinking. I wrote a, a book for you, it's called I Am Number Eight, and I want to give this to, where it? Well, you walking down here, act like you want it. This book is for anybody that's ever been overlooked, undervalued, but you are not forgotten by God. Only take it if you're going to read it. If you ain't going to read it, give my book. Don't snatch either. I have those available out there and I'll be out there. Would love for you to stop by if you want. And even if you don't want, stop by, I need your help. Um, get the book. <laughs> and it is the title of my sermon this morning. I am number eight. First Samuel 16, because whether you know it or not, there's somebody in this room or watching online that God is about to shine the spotlight on. Watch this. But it's not just for you to floss. He's actually going to teach the devil something. Because the enemy thought he had done enough to shut you down. And some of our wounds have been self-inflicted. We messed up. I don't know about you, but there's some things I did wrong. Anybody else can be on? Every time it, ain't, it wasn't the devil. I drove to her house. It was me. I did it, Jesus. I'm sorry, baby Jesus. Look, y'all put your hands down like we got cameras. People is not talking about now, I'm talking about back in the day. Anybody ever done some self-inflicted damage? Here's what I love. Get this in your spirit. And 
all the people that don't like you need to hear this too. Because there are people who don't want you to be in any position of leadership or authority or influence because they know you. You don't know what he did. You don't know what she did. Here's what they need to know. God knew what you would do and still chose you. Wait, I'm sorry. I know you got your Bible in your hand. You can't clap like you want. Get this. Your mistakes did not catch God off guard like, woo! Ah! Holy Ghost, did you see what they did? No, sir, I didn't see Father. God knew what you and I would do and said, I factored in their humanity and I'm still calling them. All right, let me, let me give you 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. We're in Bethlehem right now. We're at the house of a man named Jesse. Anybody named Jesse in here? <laughs> Just went like, yeah, that's me. They invited me here this morning. I ain't never been in here. This is nice. <laughs> Jesse sounds like he cooked ribs. You understand me? Work on cars. My name is Jesse. <laughs> Jesse in a town called Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a familiar place. Pastor Ontario, I've heard of Bethlehem. Where did Somebody else was born in Bethlehem. We'll get to that later, but God came to Bethlehem a couple times. And he sent his prophet, Samuel. Now, Samuel wasn't no TV prophet like some of these prophets we see late night. I'm going to tell you it right now. You better turn, don't you turn off that TV right now. You better... <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you better call that number on your screen. I'm going to send you some water, put it on your kneecap. Your arthritis might go away. I'm going to tell you that right now. You better dial that number on your screen right now. This was a prophet. The Bible says not one word that he said fell to the ground. He was a bad boy. Oh, that God would raise up prophets that ain't scared to preach the word. And ain't trying to please people. Ain't nothing worse than a people-pleasing prophet. More concerned with your reputation than the word of the Lord. You've got too many fragile preachers scared of people being mad. Preach the word. If the word ain't enough, then find something else to do. Go be in corporate. But Jesus said, you'd be hated by all men for my sake. So either suck it up or sit down. need some grown men. Back in the day, we ain't have no praise and worship team. We had deacons, nine of them. Brown suits, cream shirts, leading worship. God is looking for somebody. It's in the scripture, by the way. Tap somebody say, I think he's looking for you. Somebody else, I think he's looking for you. What up, Mike? I think he's looking for you. Get that in your spirit that you're not looking for him, he's looking for you. I found Jesus. What do you mean you found him? He wasn't lost. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is outside keeping the sheep. You don't want to bother with him. He talks to himself. He's in the field singing songs I ain't never heard of. He's just out there, just talking, just talking to nobody. Nobody that you could see, Jesse. Some people think you're crazy. Some of y'all are. Um, Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Oh, you don't even know it. You came in here with the orange light on in your gas tank. And you didn't know that you're the one that God was counting on. Came in here and you got 
children that look like the man that left you trying to figure out how come he won't pay support and how in the world is God going to meet the need? Oh, you have no clue that you are the exact one that God is looking for. Sir, your heart's been broken. You don't know how you can get your life put back together, but something in you said, I'm going to get to church today and hopefully God will say something to me. God is saying something to you. He is looking for you this morning. Arise, anoint him, for he is, this is the one. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers, in the midst of his haters, I mean in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. I am number eight. Lord bless the word, amen. Be seated. Somebody say, I am number eight. This story in 1 Samuel 16 is amazing on a number of levels because Israel wanted a king. They wanted somebody to go before them. And God said, yo, but you got a God. What you need a king for? It's like, we don't, we don't want you. We want a king. We want to be less than who we actually are. God said, cool. I'm going to just go ahead and give y'all Saul. Saul was handsome. He was real tall, taller than everybody else. Cosmetics. How often have we gotten caught up with the cosmetics of an individual instead of the character of the individual? And so we know how that worked out. And God said, this dude, this, he's, he's a whack. Samuel, get the oil. Go to Bethlehem. I provided for myself a king. Now, when you think of king, you think of monarchy, you think of ruler, and rightfully so. But when you think of a king, you think of palaces, and you think of uh, all of the pomp and circumstance and crowns and such. Anybody remember when... Uh, the Prince of Wales over here got married, and it was on TV when royalty gets married. People that don't know nothing about England, nothing about watching CNN, just, ooh, look at that. Mm. <laughs> what did that man do to become a prince? He was born that way. Do not assume because your circumstances don't look like it that you weren't born royal. You are not the product of a romantic encounter between mom and dad. You are not the product of somebody's will, nor are you an accident, for you cannot sneak into the earth. You have to be spoken into the earth. If you are alive, it's because God willed for it to be so and you will not return to him void. And so you're going to keep living until what you were created to do is fulfilled. So all the people that don't like you can take a seat while God elevates you while they watch. Better yet, the people that love you for real can be with you and high five you while you go. Because when you are successful and functioning in your purpose, I'm successful, I'm happy. When you are thriving, I'm happy. And I don't need a piece of your blessing to feel validated. If my name never gets called, I want you to win because we are not in competition with one another. I don't need your purpose to be less than mine. I don't care if I get a name tag. I need you to be successful because the kingdom wins when you win. Many of us become insecure because we're trying to uh, parallel our callings and our gifts with other people. The enemy of the anointing is comparison. Miranda, I love how you sing. I want to throw things at you. I want to take off my shoe, but I just bought it. And you're amazing. 
and I started singing a song. Oh yeah, we can thank God for her gift and her anointing and her passion and her commitment and her power. And I was singing the song that you sang and realized, oh, well, Miranda's here. I was trying to sing it because I have a heart to sing it, but I don't have the same level of oil for this moment to sing that song. Since she's here, why don't I access what's available? Oh, that the body of Christ would stop trying to do everything would you have several of these seats and do what you were created to do and let other people do what they were created to do? You don't have to be on dance team. You don't have to be on worship team. And uh, y'all don't even have ushers. Y'all have what? PMTs, pretty young thing. <laughs> Professional mentistry technicians. Is that like a nail tech? <laughs> What color you want? What color you want? Stop it. <laughs> Five dollar extra. <laughs> That's acrylic. <laughs> Stop it, John. I don't have to be everything and do everything. I just got to do what I was created to do. God said, I'm looking for somebody with a specific set of skills. He said, go to Jesse's house. So the prophet went to Jesse's house. Jesse's like, hey, sons, get up prophets walking in. Straighten up. Fix your robe. Fix your sandals. Prophet Samuel walks in. When he came into the city, you got to read it. The Bible says the leaders of the city trembled because they knew he was nothing to play with. Oh, that God would bring that level of respect back to the office of the pastor and the leader. This ain't no game. We're dealing with the holiness of God. We're fighting for souls. The prophet walks in, he's got oil in his hands, he's coming to anoint a king because the first king failed, because he was cosmetic, he was plastic. God is sitting down people who look the part but don't have the heart for the part. Sit down, ma'am. Sit down, sir. You've been playing games with the people of God. You've been trying to pimp the people of God. You've been playing games with their emotions. You don't pray enough. You don't fast enough. You in here playing games and people are dying. We don't have time for religion. We need somebody that when they open their mouth, devils bow down. I don't want to have to pray for five hours for a demon to leave. I need to speak it and that devil's got to go. But you got to live a holy life. Pursue peace with all men and holiness with which out no man will see the Lord. Holiness is still right. I know we don't talk about it. Samuel walked in the house. Said, I'm looking for a king. I'm trying. If you are in here right now, something, do you feel what I feel? Some of y'all got that body magic on, but you're about to shout in that thing. Listen to me very carefully. I feel a seven second praise break right here for no reason. Just, if you feel like acting up, just do it right now. Seven, six, five, four.
Somebody say, I don't know what this expression is, what the purpose of it is. I'm waiting on him to explain his scripture. This needs to be homiletic, homiletically sound and hermeneutically correct. You so busy being academic, you miss the supernatural touch of God. You can study that word and never get a revelation of who Jesus is because you need the Holy Ghost. And you telling me not to worship in here after what the Lord has done in my life? After how many times the devil almost took me out with my help? But if I was at that Cowboy Stadium, I could scream for a team that doesn't know me, but you want me to be quiet for the God who saved me? I need somebody to bless the Lord. Somebody say yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. walks in the house with his oil he's looking for someone the first son Eliab he's standing there he's handsome he's the firstborn this is a Middle Eastern patriarchal society the firstborn gets the double portion everyone knows this he's a bad boy handsome teeth perfect white like ivory I don't know just cut up muscles all that the prophet sees him and says to himself obviously this is the one let me help you to understand because some of y'all been frustrated your whole life because the people who you thought should see you never saw you God had to teach the prophet a lesson. He said, no, Samuel. I see what you see, but I also see past what you see. Don't put my oil on him. I've refused him. Because man looks at the outside. God looks at the... Some of y'all been doing the best you can with what you have left, and God's been seeing it. And he's about to honor you for that. Sometimes you can be so gifted that even prophets could be fooled. Samuel's about to pour the oil. The oil was in the bottle like, ain't don't nobody move. Everybody stay in here. Because the oil doesn't respond to gravity. because the oil is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. So then when Eliab is embarrassed because he thought he was going to be king too, he's looking at his brother and y'all just sit there. All right, you're going to be my vice president. You're going to be in my cabinet. Go ahead, pour the oil. What you mean? No. <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing. Samuel goes to the next son. God said, no. Third, no. Four, five, six, seven, no. Seven, the number of completion. It was a complete no. I'm just telling, tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to shout, don't mind me. Tell him now, just. So now we're caught up with the scripture. Now Samuel, the prophet, is confused. And he says, I know God told me to come to this house. He told me one of your sons was the king. So the obvious question is, are all the young men here? Jesse said, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the ones I'm proud of.
I mean, the ones I think are gifted. The ones I invested in. But I mean, if, if you're talking about somebody that I had, well, I mean, I got another one. <laughs> you don't want him. He's out in the field. He talks to himself. He sings songs and writes poems. And he's flighty. He's creative. And he's weird. He thinks differently. And the prophet said, send for him. And all y'all stay standing. Y'all been hating on him his whole life. God's about to show y'all who was in your house the whole time. I don't know who this is for, but some of your family didn't know what you carry. It's not that they didn't like you, they couldn't see you. So now Jesse has to call for the son he forgot about. And he says, David! And out in the field, working, serving, overlooked, no name tag, not looking for applause or accolades, not looking for a title or a position, being faithful with sheep that did not belong to him in the field by himself in the heat of the day, stepping over sheep poo. And when he wasn't shepherding the sheep, he was writing songs because out there in the field all day by yourself, it gets lonely. And instead of losing your mind, he started singing to God. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I like that. Let me, what should I say next? Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I like that song. He was by himself. There was no praise team. There was no cameras. There was no Snapchat. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram live. Just a little boy and his God because his brothers didn't like him and his father couldn't see him. So he started talking to his heavenly father and he got his identity in the field and nobody was looking for him because he was a number eight. But a number eight is what God was elevating. I don't have a church in here. And while he's worshiping, Dr. James, that was the part where they should shout. While he was worshiping and working, his name was called. He heard his name. David? Yes, Dad? Come in the house. Yes, sir. He didn't realize that as he was walking, it was the last day he would not be king. He had no clue that as he was walking, he was graduating. You didn't know when you were walking into the building today, you should turn your tassel from the right to the left. You didn't know when you logged on this morning that God was getting ready to elevate you. As David was walking, still dirty, from covering sheep that didn't belong to him, God was telling angels, lean in, look. My son is going to come through this lineage. You see that boy? The number eight, the one nobody thought had any gifts. Watch what I do. 
He walks in the house. God says, him! Let me rewind, because y'all don't know what to do when you, you hear the word standing there. Let me rewind. And so, walks in the house. God says, her! With everything you've gone through, mistakes and all, with everything you've done, sir, David walks in, has no clue what's going on. While he's standing there, God whispers to the prophet, says, that's him. Prophet walks over, takes the cap off the oil and begins pouring it on David. The fragrance fills the room in front of his haters. The brothers that didn't like him, the father who couldn't see him. And he didn't have time to clean up. I don't know who this is for, but you're like, if I could just get myself together, then the Lord will anoint me. No. He's about to anoint you with the dirt still on you. Just to let the world know your process was a part of your elevation. Are we allowed to shout now or should we wait a few minutes? The oil is flowing, cutting through. Everything that had been hidden immediately was unlocked in one moment. He didn't ask for the moment. He wasn't praying for the moment because he didn't even know the moment was coming. I don't know who this is for. You don't even know what to ask for what's coming. You, you haven't even prayed it yet. And it should be arriving right about. Do you know what's scheduled to show up on the other side of this worship? And you still sitting down. Let me help you. If you leave here the same way you walked in, it's because you want to. But if there's anybody in this church that knows that there's something on the other side of this worship that unlocks the rest of your destiny, I would encourage you to do that right about Some of y'all still in these premium chairs and you need to scoot out into that aisle because what is on you cannot be contained. And y'all like, but can I move? What, what will they think? Why do you care what they think? They don't pay any of your bills. Nobody here has anything that they can give you so you might as well worship. Watch this. David gets anointed the king of a nation. Now, if it had been me, around the people that didn't like me and I got anointed, I would've been like, in your face. I didn't like none of y'all. Bow down when I come to your town. All them little jokes, you need to cut it. Got me judging me. You hated on me for no reason. All I wanted was to be accepted. My own father wouldn't even invite me in. What did David do? I'm anointed. Samuel said, yes, this is what I believe David did. Are we finished? Yes. Can I go back outside now? <laughs> Son, you're anointed king. Yeah, but nobody's watching the sheep. So I'm gonna go back outside because the anointing don't change who I am, it just unlocks who I am. Is there anybody that God can trust with the next level, but you don't change? Don't start walking around wearing sunglasses, not speaking to people. Please don't get security and not want to touch the people. Can you be anointed and trusted? When do we become stars? 
Ain't no stars in the church. It's one star. His name is Jesus. And if Jesus can touch the people, so can we. David the oil, the physical oil was a manifestation of what God had been doing in the field so I need you to be blessed with this word you can be anointed but not announced you can be chosen but not yet called You can be gifted, but unseen. And it's okay. Because God's doing a suddenly work in your life. Wasn't Pentecost, Dr. James, you're the theologian. I submit to you. Wasn't Pentecost a suddenly thing and suddenly? A suddenly sound? A suddenly move? Kind of like we were all here on one accord. <laughs> And suddenly somebody somewhere got the revelation. This is the word that God sent to unlock me. And isn't it funny that he sent a preacher that nobody knew was going to be a preacher from a single parent household in the city of Cincinnati, one of the smallest cities in the Midwest. Nobody knows nothing. My church wasn't on the internet. Nobody knows us. Didn't nobody see me directing the choir at seven years old and being in church plays and sitting there and going to church in the afternoon program and eating that chicken that hadn't been seasoned with them rolls and them green beans with no onion powder on them and the church punch with the sherbet in there and them mints. Nobody saw when I was faithful there. How did you get to Lakewood? I served when nobody knew who I was. I was faithful when nobody saw who I was at a church with no cameras and no internet. But God saw me and God knew that if he ever put me on a big platform, I wouldn't tell people I made it. I'd say God did it. Is there anybody in here that God can trust to say he did it? Because if you're going to try to take credit for what he did, you're not going nowhere. You'll be in a holding pattern. Somebody say, I am number eight. I am number eight. How come it wasn't the seventh son? Because he had already completed that he needed a number eight. Because eight is the number of new. God's about to start something new with you. I said, God's going to start something new with you. I need you to catch this. Here's the thing. If David's brothers and if David's father had seen David worship, they would know what was coming next in his life. Some of y'all, the people haven't seen your worship. They haven't seen your tears at the house. They ain't heard you singing in the shower. They ain't seen you at the stoplight, waving your hands at people next to you. Oh, she is crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I'm doing this to keep my mind because you don't know what I'm going through. But I got to worship in this car. I've got to race. So I got to get it out. Some of y'all put an earpiece in and walk down the street. You ain't talking to nobody. You praying. You just don't want nobody to think you're crazy. Are there any crazy worshipers in here? If people saw your worship, they would know what was coming next. I believe my time is coming to a close. Number eights are made for three things. Number one, we made for worship. See, my grandmother, she was a number eight. When she would get bad news on the phone, I would watch her. I was a little boy. She'd hang the phone up and she'd walk around this brown coffee table and she'd say, Jesus, 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 ah, Jesus, Jesus. Now, as a little boy, I thought prayer was saying a whole bunch of words. But what I didn't know is that my mother had relationship and my grandmother had relationship. 
and when you have relationship with him, his name is the prayer. Is there anybody in here that can say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Somebody say yeah, 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 yes, Lord. When you're a number eight, you don't care who sees you worship. Number sevens are embarrassed. All things come of thee, O Lord. But number eights will tear this rug up. Are there any number eights in the church this morning? Give them 30 seconds to give God a number eight praise. I need you to get out of that seat. And I need some worshipers down here. When I think about Jesus, what is that for me? When I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can... When I think about Jesus, what is that for me? When I think about Jesus, how we set me free, I can... We interrupt this regularly scheduled service to bring you a special announcement. The Holy Ghost is here. And he will not be contained on the internet, in these red cushions. If you've ever been through hell, if you've ever been overlooked, people thought they knew the ceiling to your calling, you're a number eight. <laughs> number eights are made for worship. They don't care where, they don't care when. Number two, they're made for warfare. Where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? Hey, where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? 
Where my warriors at? Where my warriors at? Hey, where my warriors at? 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 Then lift them hands up. Lift them hands up. Lift them hands up. Lift them hands up. We in the potter's house. 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 So get them hands up. Get them hands up. Get them hands up. Get them hands up. I'm a warrior. I'm a worshiper. Get my hands up. Get my hands up. I'm a breakthrough. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Where my warriors at? Anybody want to party at? Uh, anybody want to warrior with me? Anybody want to praise them with me? Wave them hands in the air. Wave them hands in the air. If you're a warrior and a worshiper, and a warrior and a worshiper, worship they're made for warfare and finally they're made to win stay right there I said they're made to win what's the scripture thanks be to God who sometimes most of the time occasionally who always causes us to triumph. I worship, I war in the spirit, therefore I win. I don't know who this is for, but you've been fighting devils, but the referee just called it in your favor. Lift your hand victorious, cause all I do is win, 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 no matter what. I come into the church house and I gotta pray and I gotta lift my hands up, lift my hands up, lift my hands up. Hey, all I do is win, 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 no matter what, no matter what the devil try to do, he can't front. Hey, and if you hear every time your hands go up and then they stay there.
it down. I said, give God a number eight praise. If you're here and you know that something broke in your favor, high five to three people around you and y'all shout together real quick. Just. Listen to me. Stay in that crazy praise mode. I just want to honor Bishop. So whenever he sees this, I just want him to know. I watch you. I've been watching you since I was a young man. Since my days in Cincinnati, you go preach at Solid Rock Church outside of Cincinnati at Darlene Bishops. I remember one night, the Lord told me to just wait in the back to pray with you and your wife that the Lord would keep you safe so you could continue to preach the gospel. I know people always be around, but I remember I was in my car driving to the highway. God said, turn around. And I turned around. I couldn't have been no more than 21 and you came out, and I said, Bishop, the Lord just told me to pray to keep you safe as you travel. There was a thunderstorm that night, and I prayed the Lord would keep you, not knowing that one day you would allow me to preach in this pulpit. That was 22 years ago. I sowed a seed 22 years ago that reaped a harvest today. I don't know who this is for, but no seed you sow has been forgotten. I love you, sir. Thank you for everything that you've meant to me and my wife, my kids. My son asked to see you on TV. He's five. I want to see Bishop Jakes. You know your daddy preached. Yeah, but I want to see Bishop Jakes. <laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> and we'll watch when we can. But I sowed a seed. And it came back. I don't do manipulation. I don't play games. If you feel led to sow into this moment and sow into this house, not me, into the house, get something in your hands or get it out of your purse and bring it to the altar. We're getting ready to have Dr. James and come and we're going to have our altar call, but if you feel like this word, don't stop worshiping. If you feel led, sow something. If not, keep praising, but don't stop your worship.